What is going on you guys? So last week I uploaded one of my favorite videos that I've ever made. It was my first official moto camping trip and we took a hike to the top of a mountain to spend the night in a cave. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a card on the screen right now. I recommend checking it out. It will give some context of why I'm doing this video and today we're gonna be talking about all of the gear that I used. So first and foremost, this is not an ultralight setup. It's light in terms of motorcycle camping, but in terms of backpacking, it is not. I had mentioned in the video that I had approximately 50 pounds in my pack, and I think that was pretty accurate. Granted, I was including my camera equipment into that, which is pretty heavy. So I know that's not gonna pertain to most of you watching this, so we will leave that out of this video. I will say all of the gear that I did bring, I used, and I was really happy with the selection. There's definitely some things that I will modify, and I wanna get that weight down lower, but pretty much all of my gear was carried on my back, so I didn't actually utilize the bike, which I will definitely be doing in the future. I do have a tank bag bag on there and I have a rackless system for the rear that I just haven't installed yet so I'll definitely be able to take more creature comforts in the future but I do like the idea of keeping things light and minimal. So getting right into this my favorite piece of kit by far this is the Tanny Fanny as some of my friends will call it. This is from Dekine it has five liters of stores so pretty large for a hip pack and as you can see with this hose right here it is a hydration pack. I use this thing seven days out of the week from going on walks in the morning to every ride that I go on I have this thing with me they make a bunch of different models but I wanted one that was large enough to haul a decent amount of gear and had some organization I think I still have everything that I took on the trip so what is inside so I always carry the shovel with me use your imagination on what I use this for but it comes in handy and if you're the person that likes to take a on the ground and leave their paper everywhere shame on you i carry a small microfiber cloth you can use these things for damn near anything but i use mine for my camera lenses in here i keep a small roll of wire now this could be used for a number of things mainly i have it for bike repairs i find this to be handier than zip ties and you can repair chains and do a lot of cool things with wire you could also snare a small game if you ever got into a survival situation and it's just a versatile piece of kit that hardly weighs anything so i like to practice my bushcraft skills now and then so I carry a small ferro rod with me this one has the striker attached to it so you don't have to dull anything it's definitely a good skill to have these things last forever and I also have a lighter buried down in here somewhere a couple small camera batteries and nothing else that's really worth showing oh shoot I almost forgot I always carry a pocket knife on me now I've been using the Milwaukee fastback for the last year and that's a fantastic utility knife but I wanted a real blade and recently Gerber updated their armbar series and it's a lighter weight multi-tool a lot of cool features on this the biggest thing is the bit driver that it has on it I'll be doing a tool bag specific video coming soon then I'll talk more about why I got this I'm a huge knife fan so let me know what knife you carry down in the comments during the trip this is actually where I kept my food so this was just an overnight trip I had enough for one meal and enough water for two days so I had a nice big steak in there all the vegetables and I still had room to spare this thing is freaking awesome and as always links to all of these products will be down in the description they are affiliate links that help support the channel in the other pouch I normally don't put anything in here because this is where the two liter water pack sits I don't want anything loose in there that could potentially damage this but sometimes if I have something soft I'll throw it in there a lot of the other hydration packs are only one and a half liters and every liter counts man I don't know how some of these backpackers do it we are in the desert though and there's no humidity so water goes quick now for a longer trip I would definitely have more in here I'd like to add a compass I'm guilty of using my phone for a lot of those things but that was just a quick day trip if you have never tried a hip pack before I highly recommend it your friends will probably make fun of you but they're super functional and they'll probably be asking you for stuff moving on <sighs> This is the heart of the operation. This is my F-Stop Talopa 50 liter backpack. Now this pack specifically is for a super niche group of people. This is one of the nicest trekking photography bags that you can get. I would probably not have bought this, but I found one used for an absolutely 
amazing deal. So just a brief overview for any camera nerds out there. These things come with an internal ICU. They make several different sizes. I have a small and a medium. It's a modular system that uses basically a zip up cube that has the foam padded dividers and you can organize all of your camera gear. Why I like it being out here on the road and not wanting to have a bunch of different packs, you can take it out and use it as a normal pack like we did for this trip. So I guess we'll start on the outside of the pack. Right here is my click chair. Now these things are awesome, but not a backpacking tool by any means. This thing sets up in a matter of seconds. It's a super comfortable chair, and I probably will continue to use this once I have some more storage on the bike. I don't remember what the weight is on this. I'll put it on the screen, but it's definitely a few pounds heavier than a traditional backpacking chair. A chair is definitely an optional item, but it is a nice creature comfort to have while you're camping. Now on the other side, I did have my carbon tripod. I ended up carrying it most of the trip after we got off of the bike. I don't even think they make this specific model anymore. It's just a really nice piece of kit that I also found used. Guys, I get a lot of stuff secondhand. I'm still a frequent user of eBay and Facebook Marketplace, so I highly recommend buying things secondhand. You'll save a lot of money and it's worth the extra time and effort. I think that's all I had on the outside. I had a jacket strapped to it and I had strapped my hip pack to it at one point, but for my first trip using this pack, super happy with it. On both sides, all the way down, there's a large zipper compartment. This is where I kept my larger hydration bladder. This is one that I use in my other chest protector pack, but the valve on this one stops water from coming out once you disconnect the hose, so I can just use it for an additional water source, and that was really nice. Now you have a nice pouch on the top here. This is where I carry some of my essential sunglasses, my headlamp. I use the new Milwaukee headlamp. USB-C finally. Stupid to carry for backpacking, but it is so nice. I love the true tone color that it emits. I cannot stand harsh light on any kind of LED light for that matter. It's gotta have some type of yellow hue to it or it just drives me crazy and reminds me of a hospital. So if you have any ultralight headlamps that meet that criteria, please let me know. What did I have on this trip? Oh, there's my lighter. I had some waterproof matches, some hand warmers, and just a roll of paracord. I also had a power bank with me and a multi-charger. These things are pretty sweet. Now there's a couple ways to access this pack. You can access things from the top here. There's another zipper compartment up top. If you didn't know this about me, I actually really enjoy cooking, especially in the outdoors. And this is one of the most versatile systems on the market. I've been using Jetboil products for over 10 years. They are absolutely rock solid. I still use that original one. But the new Jetboils that go under the Mo name, this is the Micro Mo, they come with a burner that you can actually fine tune the adjustment and simmer things. Literally everything you need is kept inside of this small package. Fuel canister, stand, the burner itself. It even has a cup on the bottom here and a lid on top. And I also have their summit skillet. Now I'm not big on non-stick coatings. I'm not going to get into all the conspiracy theories of that, but when I'm not going light, I'm using cast iron. But let me tell you, for sheer convenience, the summit skillet is amazing. I did not even need to oil this and the steak would have just slid right out. It comes with a spatula that actually nests into the handle. You could also store some other softer things in here. You don't wanna scrape the coating off, but it is a ceramic coating, super light, aluminum, staying in the jet boil ecosystem. I am a big fan. And actually none of this gear other than the click chair has been sponsored. On the outside, I also kept a couple stakes, which out here you pretty much can't use. It's all rock and loose sand. Tarred Mariner's line, just bushcraft stuff that I've kept in my pack. It's always good to have some extra cordage. Now I have this old Goal Zero Lantern and I really love this thing. I just wish it was freaking USB-C. I'm very picky with my charging systems and hopefully iPhone next year is going to USB-C. So I will only need one charging cable for everything and that'll be awesome. But this is actually a solar lantern, so you can set this out in the sun, get some charge to it, and it compresses down into a nice small package. You can hang it. I hung it from the top of my tent. It's lightweight to where it doesn't sag or anything. And overall, good piece of kit. Let's go ahead and empty out the contents of the pack. So one item that I did forget was this stainless plate. You don't want to eat out of that skillet, like I mentioned, because you'll damage the coating. So this thing is super nice. It also doubles as a backup cooking method. You could throw this right on some coals and cook something up quick. So the inside of my pack consists of nothing but my sleep system. And this side of the table was absolutely essential. 
This was just a creature comfort. I ended up bringing this large wool blanket to use as a throw on top of my sleeping mat, and I don't regret it. I was super cozy because it did get pretty chilly at night. It got into the 40s, so this took up a lot of room, but it's always good to have a wool blanket. They are fire retardant. They will hold their insulation properties even when wet, and wool is just a great material. But focusing on everything else here, this all does count as ultralight, and I'm super happy with everything that I've chose. So starting from the ground up this is my tarp that i use it's actually from the german military they sell these on amazon it is made of 100 percent ripstop nylon this thing is super durable and i love this tarp the tent so i went ahead and bought this last second it was my first time using it and it's from a company called katoma it's a pop-up one-man bivy tent as you'll notice i don't have an overhead tarp it is not really necessary out here in the desert there is no humidity on top of that i stayed in a cave but they do sell one that fits with this system and it would probably fit in this bag as well now the best thing about this is the setup time it uses a series of fiberglass poles and when you unfold it it'll pop up into its final form for me convenience is key and i didn't want a bulky tent now if i'm back home or anywhere with trees you can find me in a hammock 100 of the time i love hammock camping it's ultra light super comfortable you don't have to worry about anything on the ground water bugs animals you will see a lot more of me swinging in a hammock on the channel but i needed something for our western adventures where there are no trees and this worked perfectly. It is priced well for the quality that it is, but it might be expensive for some. So thank you China for coming up with a counterfeit option that they sell on Amazon. I have no affiliation with Katoma, but if you are confident that you're going to like this, I recommend going with the Katoma because it's definitely made out of better materials and it is built to last. Now the breakdown time was just as easy. You just have to remember the folding pattern. It gives you instructions. I actually keep them in here. Did I mention that I freaking love this. So the remaining three items is what will get you through the night and what keeps you comfortable. Now I had never heard of this company before, but I got down into a ultralight backpacking rabbit hole and ended up finding out about Pariah Outdoor Products. They offer bar none some of the most affordable backpacking products on the market and they are quality. This is their Recharge XL ground mat. I am six foot four, so I needed the XL and I like to spread out a little bit and I absolutely love this sleeping pad. A lot of people would use those small rechargeable pumps. I blew it up with my mouth after that hike. So I think I'm just gonna continue to do that in the future because I didn't have a problem. I also bought one of their down sleeping pillows. Very comfortable, retain some heat. And look how small that thing is. Down packs really nicely. And that leads us into our last and final offering on the table. This is their 15 degree quilt made of 90% down. This is the first quilt that I've ever bought. I always use sleeping bags in the past, but I will definitely continue to use quilts in the future. Not being confined to a sleeping bag, especially when it's not in freezing temperatures is a nice feeling. The difference between a quilt and a sleeping bag is there's no bottom like a sleeping bag is a mummy bag at 360 degrees and you waste all of that insulation on the bottom because you compress it and with a quilt you can pack all of that insulation and keep it on top of you where it counts now in colder weather you really need to strap it down underneath your mat to prevent air from coming up in if you move in the night and accidentally create an air gap there goes all of your heat that you've built up so there's definitely downfalls but i will continue to be using this in the future and continue to test it in some more inclement weather but all of this stuff is essential super affordable and i love the pariah products but that is it that is all of the gear that i took on my mountaintop cave experience i really did enjoy making every single part of that video and there will be plenty of more camping videos to come as far as gear everything works differently for different people and ultimately you just have to make the decision of which route you want to go that kind of leads me into talking about using a backpack i know a lot of people make it their goal to keep all of their gear on their bike and off of their back, but I think having a backpack is essential. If something were to ever happen with your bike, what are you gonna do with those saddlebags? Are you gonna tie them over your back? It can definitely be a balance, but I do recommend taking a backpack of some kind. People have been using backpacks on motorcycles since they were invented, and I'm a huge fan of well-designed packs with good hip belts. That is a key feature. If you're able to get a good hip belt and just cinch that thing down, it takes all of the 
load off of your shoulders. And especially if you're on a bike, you can loosen the straps to where it just sits on the seat when you're sitting down. That's something that I normally do. And when you get into those gnarlier sections, just cinch it up and continue to ride. Now, do I wanna carry 50 pounds on my back any longer than I did? Absolutely not. But if you look behind me, I am also riding a dirt bike, not an adventure bike, not a big cruiser. I absolutely love the idea of an ultralight backpacking setup and a dirt bike. You're able to do so much more aggressive riding and just having less gear is always less headache in my opinion. Everything's gotta be multi-use. Ideally, I would like to be able to carry enough kit to last a week. Now in the Southwest, the biggest limiting factor is water. If I was further north and had access to streams, I would carry far less water. I would have a water filtration system with me and that would pretty much eliminate that worry. Food takes up a lot of space, but I'll have more storage on the bike to deal with that. And I think the end goal is to have a complete week's worth of supplies around the 60 pound mark. And I know a lot of ultralight backpackers are saying how easy that is and that's still too much, but I still do wanna utilize the benefit of having this conveyance and having the extra storage capacity. So I'm pretty excited for this next chapter of the channel. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys and girls use. And at the end of the day, it's all about getting outdoors and having fun. So ending on that note, always remember to live free and adventure daily.